Amen. Finish her tonight. Hallelujah. We'll have the girls come back up in a little bit and they can play and do in a little while. Hallelujah. God is good tonight. Amen. If we'll stop our complaining, bring yeah. the Bible up here, Rachel. If we stop our complaining and start counting our blessings, we'll see that the good outweighs the bad. Amen. Every time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just thank God for the honor and the privilege to once again break the bread of life with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. You know, sometimes things you're going through, the discouragement, the, the battles, the struggles, sometimes it's hard to keep your head lifted up. Amen. And if you'll go get me some paper towels, be great. But nevertheless, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're battling, Brothers, we'll just keep our trust That's in right. God. And know that this too shall pass. Amen. Come on. We shall be victorious. Because there's one thing I learned years ago, and, and when you're in the middle of the storm, when you're in the middle of the battle, when you're going through the situation, sometimes it's hard to remember. But brother, if we will keep our remembrance on the fact that the devil is destined to fail. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I said the devil is destined. Yeah. Come on. And according to my Bible, we that are believers in Jesus Christ are destined to be victorious. Amen. Amen. So brother, it may look it may look bad, it may look ugly, and it may look like we're going to go under. But brother, that wave was much bigger than Peter. Amen. But it wasn't bigger than Jesus. That's right. Come on. Amen. <laughs> and the Bible says that the waves go under his, his feet. feet. Amen. Yes. Come on. Come on. Bless Peter Lord. may have sunk because he took his eyes off of the Lord. But that wave never touched Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If y'all got your Bibles with you, this message came back to my mind, matter of fact, yesterday. And I thought about it. And. and and lo and behold, Brother Jason asked me if I'd come tonight. And I thought, Lord, I was just thinking about this message. And brother, it applies. You're going to know in a little bit. But if y'all got your Bibles, Acts chapter 16, start with verse 11. We'll read 11 through 19. Once you get there, let us stand to our feet for the reverence of the reading of God's Word. I desire your all's prayers tonight. You ministers, you ministers know that we ain't preachers. We're just a mouthpiece. Amen. Amen. But it takes Him to preach. Yes, it does. Come on. And if He don't take over this mouthpiece, then brother, I can't do nothing. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 16, start with verse 11, says, Therefore, Losing, loosing. Therefore, loosing from Troas. Troas, we came with a straight course to. I can't pronounce these words. Samothracia. Samothracia. And the next day to Neapolis. And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the, uh, unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of... Can't say that one either. Thyatira. With, which worship God heard us whose heart the Lord opened and opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she saw and when she was baptized, her household she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide thither abide there. And she constrained us and it can notice this and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel 
possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Yeah. The on. same followed Paul and us, cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. How many even knows the devil knows? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to that spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that, that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you, Father, we worship, we praise you, we thank you, God, for all the many blessings, God, that you bestowed upon us. Now, God, as we go into this preached word, God, your anointed word, I ask, God, that you get Mike Thornburg out of the way. God, let your anointing, your spirit take over in this house tonight. We can do nothing in ourselves. God, forgive us of every fault, every failure, every sin, every shortcoming, God. And help us, God, to be what you'd want us to be. Let your word go out and accomplish what has been sent out to do. Let it return. Lord, we know that it will not return void, but it will accomplish what has been sent out to do. And we magnify you, we worship, we praise you, save, deliver, loose, and make free in the name of Jesus. And we magnify you, we worship you, and we praise you. For we ask it all in your sweet name. And amen. Amen. I want to spend just a little time here tonight on one verse of Scripture out of all those 10 or 11 I just read. 10, I think. The Bible says here that they're at Lydia's house and brother, they're going to... And when it came as we went to prayer, brother, they're going to prayer. Amen. And as they're going to prayer, there met a damsel, the Bible said, possessed with the spirit of divination. Yep. Come and on. when you go into the Greek word right here for the spirit of divination, you're going to find that it has three Greek definitions that I found. One of the Greek definitions means soothsaying, which it says here that she had a spirit of divination and, uh, and that she brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So, right here, brother, that sooth, that right there where it says that she had a spirit of divination, that Greek word means three things. It means soothsaying, it means divination, and it also gives that spirit a name. It is one out of few spirits, sister, that was named in our Bible. And that particular spirit was called the Python spirit. How many has ever heard tell of it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Brother, there is a python spirit that is going around this land and country today. And brother, I began to look at the uh, attributes of a python spirit and a, a natural python snake, brother, and how that it goes about and what it does. And I began to think, brother, Thanks, that Lord. we are living in a day and time where the church has got a python spirit that is coming against it. Amen. And you may look at me and say, what do you mean by that? The church is being constricted. Yeah. Oh, come yeah. on. The church is in a place where it's being constricted. Not only are we being constricted, brother, by our government, who is now telling us that if we preach against homosexuality or lesbianism, my Bible plainly tells me, brother, my Bible tells me that if a man lies with a man, it's an abomination That's unto right. God. Hey. My Bible tells me, sister, that in the last days, that they would turn from the natural use of a woman and burn in themselves one to another. Yeah. And my Bible tells me, brother, that these things oh. are a sin before yeah. God. And my Bible tells me, brother, yeah. that no oh. sin's going to enter oh. every end. But does God love these people? Yes, yes He does. Yeah. But He don't love them to the point of leaving them in their sin. He loves them to the point of bringing them out of their yeah. sin. Oh, I'm here to tell you, brother, we got things all messed up in the church world today. Honey, we got things 
messed up in the in the world today because now we're being told that we have to preach something, brother, that we have we can't offend no one. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus offended many because he told the truth. Oh, I'm here to tell you tonight, sister, Jesus offended many because he told them the truth. But people don't want to hear the truth no more. So let's constrict the house of God. Let's constrict those, brother, that is telling us the truth. Let's constrict Hello. them and make laws Hello. that tells them that they can no longer have freedom of speech Hello. and Hello. speak what needs Hello. to be spoke Hello. that will lose somebody Hello. from their spiritual Hello. sins and bring them up out of that mud pit that will bring them out of that hog pit that will bring them up out of that cesspool and put their feet on a path of righteousness, honey, that will lead sin. He saved us and freed us from our sins. Amen. Come on. Hello. But we want to be preached to today. Hello. That brother, we've been saved and we can still partake in all of that. But don't come and tell me that I have to give up my sin. Don't tell me I got to give up my bad habits. Don't tell me I got to clean up my way of talking and my way of thinking. Don't tell me I have to do these things. Just tell me I had an altar experience and I'm saved. I'm here to tell you, brother, it goes beyond coming yeah. to an altar, brother. It goes yeah. beyond just walking from a pew to an altar and saying, Jesus, forgive me. It's time to have a changed life. And I'm here to tell you, if you really, truly accept Jesus Christ and you let this word penetrate you, brother, I'm here to tell you tonight that you will have a changed life, honey. And when the love of God begins to overflow us and when the power of God becomes in us, and brother, when it begins to change us, I'm going to want to give up the things of the world. I ain't going to want it no more. I'm going to take and say that thing's not for me no more. I found a better path. But honey, because we don't want to hear the truth no more, Come on. Come on. We constrict the church. Come on. Yeah. Oh, come on. Listen, Lord. What does a python do? It don't have poison. It's not a venomous snake. Brother, it don't kill its stuff by putting out poison. It wraps itself around its prey come on. and constricts it. Oh, come on. And brother, not only is these things coming from our government, not only are they coming from uh, worldly groups out there, brother, who don't want to hear the Word of God, not only are they coming from all of the different places, but the number one place that these things are coming from are those sitting in the house of God. Brother, we've got people who want to call themselves Christian. We've got people, brother, who will come every single service, but yet they will tell the pastor what he can and what he can't preach, they will tell the pastor how to preach. They'll Hello. tell the pastor what. They'll tell the pastor's sister how to run the church. They'll try to tell him how to do everything. But guess what? They don't want to be in the limelight. They don't want to be in the spotlight. But they want to be the puppet master telling the pastor Hello. what to do. Hello. We're constricting Hello. our pastors. Hello. Oh, come on. See, when God first gave this to me, Here's the thing, brother Jason, that I was thinking when God gave this to me. He woke me up real early. And I'm not one to wake up before daylight. Amen. Bless him, Lord. You may look at me and say, you sleep late? No. I go to bed late. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Amen. I'm just one. I go to bed late. Yep. I don't know what I did with my men. But anyway, I go to bed late. So I don't get up at the crack of dawn. I get up an hour or two after daylight. But this particular morning, I woke up around 5.30 in the morning before daylight. And God began to deal with me on this message. And church, I'm not here to preach something about, to a pastor saying you're being attacked because God's going to fight your pastor's battle. Amen. Amen. Oh, come yeah, on. Come on. God is going to fight your pastor's battle. Yeah. Because if your pastor is walking upright before God, preaching what's upright before God, living what's upright before God, I promise you, brother, God's going to fight your battle. But see, here's what I'm preaching to tonight. I'm preaching to those, Brother Austin, that are allowing that python spirit to 
to work through oh, them. Yeah. They need to be delivered. Oh, and they look at me and say, what are you trying to talk about? See, the python spirit, it will go around it's prey. And this is what I began to notice about those that are in the house of God who wants to let that spirit operate on them. Brother, they won't come straight to your face. They won't come to you and say, Brother, I got this problem with you. I don't like this, that. I don't like what you're preaching. They won't do that. But instead, they'll come over here to Brother Ethan. Well, I just don't like what Brother Jason preached today. I oh. think he was wrong. Oh. Let me show you in Scripture how I think he was wrong. They'll go over to this one and say, hey, let me share something with you. How the pastor was wrong. Brother, they'll come all the way over uh -huh. here. They'll go all the way around that pastor. Yeah. They'll begin to constrict. They will yes. turn the people of the congregation uh -huh. against the pastor. And the uh -huh. next thing you know, the pastor... Uh -huh. Does it sound familiar? Are any of you in here being used of that spirit? If you are, you better be hunting this. Brother, I'm opening this altar now for anybody who says, I want rid of this out of me. Because oh, if you're coming against your pastor, you may very well have that spirit on you. Amen. Oh, Come on. Yeah. Come on. Can I say this tonight? The pastor is the leader of the church, honey. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Is this all right? Show me one person, brother, out of 500,000 that God brought out of Egypt into the promises. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me, go back. Let me go back because Moses didn't get to go into the promises. But show me one out of 500,000 that came out of Egypt, went into the wilderness, went into circles for 40 years. Show me one. Come on. That God gave direction to besides right. Moses. Come on. It didn't happen. It didn't. Oh, it didn't oh. happen, honey. Oh. Yeah. There was not one person out of 500 and some thousand that God spoke to and gave direction for the congregation of Israel outside of Moses. He didn't speak to Joshua. He didn't speak to Aaron. He didn't speak to the Levites. He didn't speak to none of the priests. He didn't speak to none of the prophets. He spoke to Moses. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. What are you trying to tell me? I'm telling you the church is to go in the direction that God shows the pastor, honey. And it's supposed to go in the way that the deacon thinks it's supposed to go or the elder of the church thinks it's supposed to go. But brother, it's to go in the direction yeah. that God showed the pastor. Yeah. Is this all right? Keep going, brother. But see, we're living in a day and time because of man's structure over the church. How about... I said man structure over the yes. church. Amen. We put people in as deacons that's not even qualified as deacons. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Just because they got a little bit of money, Come on. we put them in to keep them from leaving the church. Right. And when that one who's got a little bit of money puts their big offering in, they want to begin to control the money. And then they want to begin to tell the pastor, we're not doing this because, brother, they're the biggest financial contributor to the church. I don't care if you are the biggest financial contributor of the church. If God tells you to go in one direction, you better go the way God told the pastor. Because, brother, I'm here to tell you right now, brother, I know of a church right now that when the pastor was up preaching, God God spoke to that pastor. That pastor stopped and told the church, God just told me to rip this wall out and extend the church that direction and to prepare it for what God was going to do. But honey, because there was one in the church who wanted to dictate and control, he wanted to go that direction yep. and build a vestibule and a bell tower. No. Oh, come on. Come on. And I'm here to tell you, that is perfectly fine. If you want to build a vestibule on the front and you want to build a bell tower, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. But brother, here's what should have happened first. Build that first, then build that. Yes. Come, yes. On. Come on. Yes. Go in the direction God tells you, then build the bell tower. Yes. Yeah, come on. But because we want to go against our leadership, we begin to go around them. And see, I know a man right now in this region of Tennessee, upper east part of Tennessee, I know a man that was the young hotshot preacher of the church had an older pastor and 
The older pastor preached something that the young hotshot preacher didn't like, didn't agree with. And guess what, brother? He went completely around the members of the congregation and began to do exactly what I'm telling you right now. He began to go around the pastor, honey, and began to turn the whole entire congregation against the pastor. And then all of a sudden, one night, that young hotshot preacher and a couple of others of the church came to the pastor and said, you've got two options. You can either resign or you can be voted out. The pastor had no clue of what was fixing to happen. Because that young hotshot went all the way around to everybody, gained everybody's favor, everybody was for the young preacher, everybody turned against the pastor, and he looked at him, he said, he said, I'm not resigning. He said, if anything, he said, you all will take a vote. Brother, they took a vote and unanimously voted him out, and the young hotshot preacher, guess what? He became the pastor. We've got constricting spirits in the house of God who is coming against our leadership and we wonder why, brother, we're not seeing a move of the Holy Ghost. It's because everybody thinks they know better than the pastor. But I'm here to tell you, you don't know how God is leading your pastor. You don't know the hours that he puts in prayer for you. You don't know the hours that he puts his nose to the grindstone in the Word of God just to get up here to give you a piece of a nugget of the Word of God that can seep down into your spirit and free you from a bondage of Satan. But yet, honey, we want to come against a man of God. But can I tell you what happens when you come against a man of God? Yeah, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Preach it. My Bible tells me that Moses was the anointed leader, prophet of Israel. And my Bible says that all of a sudden, his own sister and brother rose up against him yeah. and said, basically, I'm going to paraphrase, who do you think you are, Moses? You think you're the only one that can prophesy? We can prophesy also. I'm just, I'm ad-libbing here. But they basically, that's what they were telling them. Do you think you're the only one that God speaks to, Moses? Oh. So guess what? Moses basically was saying, let's take it before the Lord and let the Lord choose. And brother, when they took it before the Lord, my Bible says that God spoke out. And brother, when God spoke, the, the sister, Miriam, I think was her name, honey, she was a yeah. ringleader of it. My Bible says she was struck with leprosy. And because the leader of the pack, the leader of Israel, interceded for his sister, God said it would only be for a few days. She could have died with that disease, honey. She could have died on the outside of Israel. See, when you had leprosy, you didn't get the pleasure of being with the group. You had to be outside. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, honey, she could have died on the outside because God did not have to heal her. But because the interceder, because the leader, brother, went before Almighty God, the one that God chose to be the leader, he interceded on her behalf. And I believe it was seven days that she had to be leprous. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You don't come against God's leaders. You don't come against who God has put in place. You don't run your mouth against them because I promise you, you're the one that's fixing to wind up in trouble. Yes. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on. Amen, brother. You don't do these things. But see, here's what happens when that python, and I went on YouTube and I watched some uh, videos of a python and how it does. And, and here's the thing that I found interesting. I watched one fight an alligator. And I can't tell you how long this alligator fought, but it fought... But every time that alligator would jerk and bite and do what it what it would do to get loose, that snake would just curl back around it. And brother, every time, here's the thing that I learned about a python. Every time you exhale and then, or you inhale, and then when you exhale, brother, when you exhale, that snake gets tighter. Yeah. 
Oh, come on. Uh -huh. You may look at me and say, well, what, why does he do that? Because if he can squeeze down tighter, you can't expand to get air back in you. So therefore, the more he constricts down, every time you exhale, he constricts down. The next thing you know, you can't breathe, brother. And the life is uh -huh. going to be squeezed out of you by suffocation. But how many times pastor after pastor after pastor, brother, come to that place of suffocation in their own church? Church because people are being used of this spirit right here, this python spirit, to come against their pastor, to run them down, to talk about them, to go around you, brother, without coming to you with their problem. They go to everybody else. I'm here to tell you tonight, this is going on in the house of God even as we speak tonight. Amen. Come on. Yes, Come on. And see, here's one thing I asked my wife. I'm in Hartford, Kentucky in my camper in the month of July when God gave me this message. I called my wife at home. I said, baby, i got to ask you a question. She said, what's that? And I began to tell her the message God was giving me. And I said, honey, I want to ask you a question. She said, okay. I said, if you squeeze the body enough, I said, will it put pressure in your head? Oh, yeah. Come on. She said, absolutely it will. Yes. What are you trying to tell me? I'm telling you that Python spirit will go around the body. Brother, that Python spirit will go around the body of this church. Oh, come on. Oh. It will go around the body of this church, brother, and it will begin to squeeze the body. Now, see, brother, it don't squeeze the head. It squeezes the body. And when the body has been constricted to that point, it will put pressure on the head. Oh, my God, brother. Brother, I'm here to tell you, how many, how many times have you felt the pressure? You're the head of this thing. How many times has that pressure come to you and you've had to deal with situations because instead of coming to you, they go to everybody else. Amen. And yeah. then you've got this ugly scenario situation that you've got to contend with. Yeah. The pressure is all on you. Yeah. The focus is all on you. What is Brother Jason going to do? Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah. And if he don't do what I want him to do, bless God, I'll take my tithe money and I'll get on down the road. You know what I can say to you? Get on down the road with your bad self. Get on down the road somebody who will tickle your ears. Come on. But brother, I ain't got time to tickle anybody's ears because brother, there's a yeah. day that this old preacher is going to stand upon the, before an almighty God and I'm going to give an account for what I I'm going to give an account, honey. And if I don't preach the truth, the Bible says that your blood is upon my hands. Amen. And I don't want somebody's blood dripping off of my fingers because I was too afraid to say something because a constricting spirit was in the church trying to stop the Word of God. Amen. Come on. Come on. You understand what I'm talking about, preacher? Yeah. Absolutely. You understand yeah. What I, come on. Yeah. How many preachers we got in here? Y'all understand that constricting spirit I'm talking about? That wants to constrict you? Oh, preacher, I'll come to your church as long as you don't preach on this. Oh, come on. As long as you tell me that I can live the way I'm living and I can come to church and I can act like I'm all holy and I can have this, this sense of being uh, saved and, but I want to live like hell, as long as you don't preach on certain things, pastor, I'll come. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. This is going all over. Amen. People, brother, will come in and let the pastor know, if you preach on this, I'm leaving. Well, all i got to say, if I'm a pastor, get on down the road because, brother, I'm going to preach it. Amen. Come on. I'm not going to let that spirit constrict me, honey, because my Bible says to whom the Son is made free is free indeed. I'm free yeah. to preach the Word. I'm free yeah. to preach the Word. I'm not bound by the enemy. I'm free to preach the Word. Amen. And if you don't want to hear it in this church, then God will give me a one down the road somewhere else to preach it. Come on. Yeah. And if you ain't going to hear your pastor, then God will give him another church somewhere else. Come on. Come on. You all have another pastor in mind you want? No. No. Oh, well, you better start listening to the one you got. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Preach it. The one that God sent. Amen. Come on. 
if you ain't got someone else in mind that's going to tickle your ears, then brother, we better get our toes out there real good. Amen. Stomp on them as much as you can, Pastor, because I'm not going to I'm not going to begin to bark and, and say all these things. I'm going to take that and let it help me grow. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. See, see, brother, here's the one thing that I learned years ago. When you throw a rock into a mist of dogs, guess which one barks? The one that got hit. Amen. Come on. Yes. Amen. When you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, brother, the one that gets hit is the one that's going to bark. Amen. And you may say, what are you talking about? I remember a time where a pastor got up behind the pulpit and he's preaching on different sins and one of the sins that he made mention of was fornication and so the next thing you know brother one of the deacons comes to that pastor i know this for a fact i was there i wasn't the pastor but i know the pastor and next thing i know brother billy the deacon comes in i attended this church yeah this deacon comes in and wants to have a powwow with the pastor and this deacon begins to tell this pastor, I don't think that you ought to preach fornication behind the pulpit. That is something that the parents should talk to their children about. But you want to know why this deacon was coming against the pastor? Because his teenage daughter because his teenage daughter went home and honey she began to bark, 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 bark at daddy and daddy began to go back to the church and bark, bark, bark at the pastor because guess who was guilty? The teenage daughter. The teenage daughter come find out brother she was hopping from this one, that one all over the place honey. But I'm here to tell you when one is guilty and it hits them they're going to either hit this altar or they're going to go away barking. Over the phone. Amen. spirits. Oh, I know another one. Brother Jason knows this pastor. Had 35 people show up at one time at their church. How would you like to have 35 people walk through that door? All at one time and pack his place out. Yeah. Lord God, amen. If they're not, go on. They came in and said, Pastor, all 35 of us will make this our home church if you'll let us come in and change your music. We don't like your style of music. No. The pastor looked down and said, you're welcome to stay, but you're not changing our music. Amen. They tried to constrict the move of God. One thing that I found about the Python spirit Brother, it will work through the people. How many knows a demonic spirit will work through a person? Amen. Amen. Yes. Can I tell you this? The Spirit of God will also work through a person. Amen. Amen. Come on. Which one are you operating in? Come on. We call ourselves saved, brother. We call ourselves Christian, but yet I find so many people in the house of God Honey, that needs to be delivered. Yes. Amen. 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 Brother, I see so many people in the house of God that had an altar experience, but they're not letting the Word of God change them. They have a knowledge of the Word of God. They, they, they've got that knowledge, but they haven't had a change. Amen. That's right. And brother, they use that knowledge in a wrong way. And the next thing you know, they begin to destroy the church. Yeah. Here's one thing that I noticed about the, the Python spirit is how many knows that once that thing coils itself around the body and brother, and it begins to constrict down and the pressure is now being on the head. That prey will fight against that thing until it absolutely has no more in it to fight. Yep. And when that snake has constricted and it has squeezed you and the pressure is so bad and you have exhausted your last ounce of energy, you have no more fight in you, you have nothing left in you, guess what will happen from there? 
it has complete control Amen. over you. Yep. What are you trying to tell me? I'm saying this python spirit is a controlling spirit that wants to control and have the leadership without being in leadership. Yep. Right. Right. Honey, it wants to dictate the direction of the church. It wants to dictate which way we go, what we do, and they're not even in leadership. But yet they want to control, they want to do, brother, and they're not even in position. And just like Brother Billy said, they're that puppet master. You know, they're behind the scenes, honey. You can't see them. But the one that is in the picture, the one that is in the limelight, is being controlled by this one who's not even seen, honey. But I'm here to tell you tonight, I'm here to tell you the one who controls the pastor, brother, is a man named Jesus. Hey. Only, hallelujah, the deacons don't have control over the pastor. The, the, my Lord, I'm here to tell you, the elders don't have control over the pastor. Only God has control. And I'm here to tell you tonight, we better bind together, sister, and get behind our pastors and believe and trust that God is going to use him. Because guess what Paul said to all of those, and it still applies today. Paul said, follow me. Amen. It still applies today. It's in Scripture. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Come on. You follow your pastor as he follows Christ. Come on. Yes, you're to have your own relationship with God. Yes, you're to be obedient to God. Yes, you're to hear and to do what God tells you. But what God tells you is not going to override what God tells him. Amen. Amen. Is this all right? Amen. Amen. But can I tell you, once that python got complete control of that alligator, brother, I noticed something. Do you all understand how, how many in here knows how a snake eats its prey? All how many has ever seen it? All at first. first, yeah. They'll swallow it whole, but they'll take it in head first. Oh, come on. Y'all getting this on a spiritual level? Come on, yeah. Hallelujah. Brother, on a spiritual level, it will squeeze the body to devour the head first. Yes. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. The oh. devil is oh, out my. to destroy the head. And if he can destroy the head, the church is gone. Uh -oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Have you been experiencing this in your oh, church yeah. lately? Come on. Brother, I'm here to tell you the devil will do its best to destroy your leadership. And if you are being the one that the enemy is using to go out here, well, bless your God, Jason, this, that. Well, you better hit this altar and say, God, forgive me because I better follow my spiritual leadership instead of running them down. I better be able to pray. If I don't understand, God, give me understanding. Hallelujah. If I don't know God, if it sounds like he's wrong, God, help instead of go out here and run yes. my pastor yes. down. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. On. Come on. Is this all right tonight? It's all right. All right. Praise God. Some of you might walk out of here and say, Dear God, what was Jason thinking asking him? <laughs> Come on. But well, brother, I'm here to tell you, we better get behind our pastors. Amen. Come on. You ain't in that position. And I promise you, you don't want in that position. No, you don't. Come on. I've been there. Amen. I know what it's about, brother. Amen. I'll go there again if God wants me there, honey. But I ain't asking for that position at all. I enjoy the evangelism. Amen. You see here, what's going on right now, brother? I'm plowing ground. Right. And as I'm plowing ground, when I'm done plowing, it's left up to him to smooth it all out. Amen. Come on. All right. He's the one who's got to disc it up and get that ground ready for planting. Amen. <laughs> But see, honey, people don't want to hear this plowing no more. No. Come on. They don't want to hear this no more, brother. They don't want to hear that we got to live right. No. Come on. But see, guess what? Not only do we got to live right, and the reason why we got to live right, because if we live right, we can die right. Amen. Oh, come on. Yeah. But, brother, we could hit that altar a thousand times. 
But if we don't let it change us and live right, Amen. what good is it going to do, brother? Amen. Come on. Come on. But I began to look at this python spirit and how that it will squeeze the body to put pressure on the head to get control of this prey. And then it begins to devour it head first. How many has ever seen a snake swallowing in its mouse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may ask me and say, what's, what, what's so important about the snakes swallowing the mouse? Because there's still life in the there's still life in the mouse there's even though it's going down. Yeah, right. yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, come on. come on, that snake ain't. I mean, that that mouse ain't dead yet. No, it still has vital signs. It's just so beaten down that it can't fight. It can't stop the inevitable. Yeah, come on, come on. And as that mouse is going in, you will see its back little legs begin to kick, brother. And you may say, well, what's that? It's still having some life in it. And the head is still telling the body, get yourself out of here. Yeah. 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 But if the body would have listened to the head to begin with, it wouldn't have got in that spot. Yeah. With that python. Come on. Come on. Yeah. As your pastor said, totally consumed. Yeah. That mouse is now becoming one through digestion. Yeah. With that snake. Yeah. That's right. right. Come on. And once it becomes one with that snake, brother, it will begin to go in the direction of that snake. Amen. And the reason why is because it's dead. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Come on. Preach it. Come on. How many churches have we walked into, brother, in our lifetime? But can I go a step further and say within the last 15 years, because me and you both has been ministers that long. Yeah. I've known you for years. I met you before I uh, married my wife. Yeah. But in the last 15 years, brother, how many churches that you've preached in that once was on fire for God yeah. Come on. is now got a congregation, but they're no dead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. They gave in to those seducing spirits. Amen. They gave in to these false doctrines. They changed their worship. They changed the direction that they were going. Oh my God, I'm preaching this church. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm here to pray. The church has changed the direction that God once had us going. And now we're going in false, the false religious directions. And because we're going in false the religious direction, brother, the church no longer has the life that it once had, honey. It's now dead. It's no longer longer kicking the way that we once was a kicking, but I'm here to tell you if we will turn our yeah. direction back to God, yeah. He is able. Oh, oh my God, can I preach oh. My Bible says, though I make my bed in hell, He will be there with me. Yeah. Brother, even yeah. though I be in the belly of the whale, if I will turn myself back to God, honey, He will bring me out of that mess, set my feet on a pathway, and send me a going. Hallelujah. Yeah. But we got constricting spirits in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Who thinks they know better than the pastor? Come on. Yeah. Come Can on. I tell you? I don't know where I'm at. I'm trying to keep up with my notes, but 
That's all right. Can I share with you two places as I began to go over this message, Brother Billy, and I began to reflect back into my spiritual life, the churches that I have attended, and I began to see all of these situations that I went through in churches and, and how different people did different things. And I thought, Lord, it was that python spirit and I didn't know. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You want to know where I found that the python spirit works the most in the church? You got your pastor. He has some ministers that has been reared up underneath him. As I was talking a minute ago, this young hotshot preacher who thought he knew better than his pastor. No. Oh, come on. I find that sometimes that python spirit works on these young hotshot preachers yeah. who thinks, brother, that they know better than the pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Because they got a goosebump. Because they feel a little bit of anointing when they're preaching. Because they think they're preaching is better than the pastor's. Come on. But brother, I'm here to tell you, God ain't speaking to that one like He is this one. Come Amen. on. God ain't speaking to that one like He is this one. God ain't speaking to that one like He is this one. God ain't speaking to that Because see, God didn't put me here to pastor, honey. Amen. So God ain't giving me direction for this place. He just gave me this message yesterday for this place. Not knowing I was going to preach here because God put this back on my spirit yesterday. Amen. And the next thing I know, I'm being asked to preach. And I said, oh, Lord, this, oh Lord, this message. But church, I'm going to tell you the second place that I have noticed that the python spirit works. Say you have a pastor. Honey, that's 30 year old. 40. And you're 60. Mid 60s, 70s. Yeah. Maybe 50s. But this person, your pastor, is a good 10 years younger than you, 15, 20 years younger than you, 30 years younger than you, whatever it is. Brother, instead of that person submitting their self to the anointing of God and the leadership that God has placed on you, they want to rise their self above you and become your spiritual mother or your spiritual father and try to tell you how to do it. Preach yeah. it. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah. Preach Have it. you seen that, brother? Yes. Brother, those that are older than you who thinks that they know better than you just because yes. they might know some scriptures, that just because, honey, they might know something in the Word of God that I might not know, but guess what? God is the one speaking to me for the direction of the church. God Amen. is the one, God, not Amen. this church, you know what I mean. God is speaking to Him for the direction of this church. And just because you're a little bit older than Him, come on. oh, come on, you better be very careful. Amen. Because see, I know a pastor that this happened to. Church was moving along good. Brother, people was being saved. People was being healed. Brother, I know a church where this actually happened. Yeah. One service, they're in the middle of revival and the enemy is binding that church service, brother, binding it. My, my wife was there. She can tell you. It was bound, was it, honey? And brother, the next thing you know, one hour goes by. And all the praise and worship is done. Preaching is done. Praying for everybody's done. One hour is done. Because that binding spirit was binding that service so bad, you couldn't get nowhere. Yeah. All of a sudden, the pastor, whenever it's turned back to that pastor, that pastor takes the microphone and begins to call out that situation. Never pointed their finger at anybody. Come never on. called anybody out by name. But Come brother on. began to call out that situation, that binding spirit, and began to call that thing out. And this lady who was sitting there, she got upset, took her purse, and stormed out the door. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. That woman's name was never called out publicly. That pastor never pointed finger like this right here. Come on. Come on. And I know he's going to get mad at me. Because I don't even know what he's doing in his life. I do know one thing. He's going to church. Amen. Praise Amen. God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But brother, this lady got up, took her purse, and stormed out the door. Next thing I know, she's calling someone who's a little older in the church, who wanted control of the church. 
And then that person takes the pastor to the side and begins to tell him, you preach with an angry spirit. If you keep preaching like that, you're going to run everybody off. Bless him, Lord. Next thing you know, that person tells the pastor, God put me here to teach you. Whoa, you better back up. Oh, no, 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 no. God does the teaching. Next thing you know, that person told this pastor, said, God put me here to teach you, to guide you, and to cut your rough edges off. No. Oh, brother. That pastor interrupted him and said, uh-uh, God put me here to teach. Amen. Spirit, honey, will operate in those who don't want to submit themselves to their leadership. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. If God rose up an 18, 19 year old boy, I look at him as boys, but when I was that age, I thought I was a man, brother. <laughs> brother, really, when I was that age, I thought I was a stuff. And I come to find out I wasn't the stuff. Amen. Me too. Come on. I found out when I turned 40 that my stuff was almost gone. Hey. I'm over that, brother. I'm over that. I can't half move like I used to. I got to buy those two or three breath shoes, you know what I'm talking about? Take a breath, bend over, tie one, take another breath, and tie the other one. Amen. Come on. Come on. I got to buy those type of shoes nowadays because I can't bend over and tie them like I used to, honey. Yeah. <laughs> the church that pieth on spirit tonight, brother, will destroy our churches. Amen. And all it has to do is to get you upset with your pastor. Mm -hmm. And if that's you tonight, then brother, we need to bump the altar. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you may like what I say, and you may not. Some of you may like it, some of you may not. But I'm going to tell you this, as my girls come up to the instruments and you all get ready to sing whatever song you want to sing while we pray for people, I'm going to tell you this. Your pastor is your leader. Your pastor is the authority that God put over the church. Amen. Amen. And every position underneath it is to be under subjection to that leadership, rather to that authority. Can I ask one question as they get ready up here? Amen. If a police officer tonight was to walk through those doors, don't know what happens. If a police officer tonight, there we go. If a police officer tonight was to walk through those doors, how many of you would stand up and rebuke him? You want to know why we wouldn't? We'd be afraid to go to jail. How many of us goes into our doctor's office and tries to tell our doctor how to be a doctor? Come on. How many of us would walk into a lawyer's office and try to tell him how to practice law? But yet, honey, we will go into the doctor's office. We will go into the lawyer's office. We'll stand before a police officer and we'll keep our cool and show respect because we know they know what they're doing. Amen. All, but yet when we come into the house of God, brother, all that respect goes out the window because our pastors don't know a thing about what they're doing. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Is this all right? Yes. Yeah. Brother, we'll walk through that door right there and we will come against our pastor, try to tell him how to run the church, try to tell him how to preach, try to tell him what to teach because our pastors apparently don't know what they're doing. Come on. Come on. All I can say for these people, brother, is this. If they think they know better than their pastor, then they need to go down the road somewhere, rent their own building. Get their own church. Get their own post.
podium, get their little building, and start preaching ourselves. Is that all right? Come on. But brother, when we got this python spirit, it will try its best to suffocate you out. Come on. How many knows what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Brother, we got to be aware of this thing. Yes. And you know, brother, greater is he that is in me Amen. than he that's within this world, brother. Amen. All it takes is a few people binding together, seeking the face of God and praying. And brother, we can get rid of this thing. 